Hello, and welcome to Microsoft Word Raffle Tickets Part 2. I'm Sandy McVeigh, and this is a video response for Otto and Jessica and Sherlyn, who had some questions that I answered already directly with them offline, but I wanted to make a video for everybody because I think that it, there were some valuable tips in here. The first thing I want you to realize is that when you are using um, a table for labels, you can include a text box. Text boxes will mess up your mail merge. So I'm going to show you how you can get the ticket that you want without including a text box. So here we go. And Sherlyn was kind enough to let me use her ticket as an example. And this is what she sent me. So this is her, about her event. And you can see that she wanted the stub text to be um, vertical instead of horizontal. And she wanted to repeat the ticket number in two places. So if I swipe over all of this information, you can see that she has several text boxes going on here. Those text boxes will um, interrupt the mail merge because Microsoft doesn't understand how to do the numbering. And what turns out is that all of these ticket numbers become 10 because there are 10 cells in this uh, table. So how do we get around this? Well, first of all, I'm just going to start over from the beginning because it's easier that way um, and show you exactly what I do. So I'm going to, first of all, just open up a blank document and I'm just going to paste the body of her text. And the only reason I'm doing this is because I don't like to mess up with somebody's original. And you can see that her date was moved over here a little bit. And I'm going to get rid of any place that has these text boxes. And when I pasted this over here, I got that extra spacing. So I will just remove the spacing after the paragraph. In effect, I believe she had no spacing between any of those. And I might have had a font change there. I think she had a really nice font that I don't have. So I will just substitute it for one that I do have. Okay, great. So if we go back to Sherilyn's sample, we have to remember what else we need. She put in this nice dotted line. It's behind her table. So we're going to make a, a line that you can clip off this ticket. That's no problem. And everything looks fine there. So let's go back to mine. And now the trick is that all of this horizontal text, we're going to save as an image. So I'm going to open up the snipping tool. And that's in Windows world, it's from the Start button under Accessories, and it looks like these little scissors. I'm going to choose New. I'm just going to draw a little box, nice and tight, around my information. I'm going to save the snip, and I'm going to put it in the folder that I'm keeping all of the information about this raffle ticket. And I'm just going to call it Ticket Info. And hit Save. Great. So I can just get rid of this here now. And I'm going to change the page layout. This is going to be my new ticket. I'm going to make the margins just half an inch all the way around. And now I'm going to insert a table that's two columns wide and five rows tall. So that's our 10 cells. I'm going to um, insert a picture. And from the desktop and my raffle ticket folder, I'm going to insert my ticket info. Great. All right, but you see that's an image now. So let's go back to Sherilyn's sample and we see name, student number, and S slash N, and then this is our merge field. So let's go ahead and do that. Name, student number, 
and S N ticket number. Great. All right. Um, we also wanted that ticket number repeated. So I'll just add that in right now. And I know this looks terrible, but it'll get better really soon. Alrighty. So let's take a look at Sherilyn's uh, numbering system. And she wanted four digit numbers with leading zeros. So she goes all the way down to a thousand tickets. So we'll go to the file menu, options, advanced, scroll down to the general section under advanced and make sure that confirm file format conversion on open is checked. It's not on by default and click OK. Mine's already set because I use it all the time. If you're setting it for the first time, you need to close Word entirely and reopen it for that change to take effect. And that's for any number formatting in Excel to carry over, including dates or phone numbers or currency. All right, so now you're saying, well, that's fine, but it doesn't look like Charlene's because her text is um, vertical. So how do we change that? So what I'm going to do is select my entire table using this little icon in the upper left-hand corner Table Tools comes on and we're going to go to the Layout tab. In the Alignment group, I'm going to choose Text Direction and just go ahead and click that. And you see what happens is that the text is now flipped in here. Our image is still um, just an image, so that text doesn't move. And now we can't see uh, everything in our cell, but right here I'm just going to change the height of my cells now that I have the whole table selected to 1.9 inches and hit enter and you can see that our text is here and I probably want to just tighten up my um, image just a little bit so everything's there all right so now I'm going to go to the home ribbon and turn on show hide it's in the paragraph group I really like to see that because then I can see exactly where my cursor is uh, in relationship to my hidden markup, like my returns. And you can see I'm just clicking and I moved that image in between those two little bits of text. Okay. And I'm going to hit enter here so student is down on the next line. So there are a few things that you could do uh, as far as spacing, but that's that's the basic idea that you get. So we have the, the ticket number on one side and then on the other side of this little um, advertisement. So we want our, I'll even make that just a tad bit smaller, just a tad bit. Right. You may have to, depending on how your text is relating to your image you can go to picture tools format and change the wrap text instead of being in line with text you can make it tight or top and bottom so that you have a little bit of leeway to move this around in the cell and get it exactly the way you want if you're not used to seeing these hidden markup uh, characters I'm going to turn them off by clicking show hide again to give you a better idea what this would look like so we'll just, uh, I'm just holding down the shift and the underline key that's up next to the zero to give some uh, line spaces here to write the name and the student number on. But here I would like um, a dotted line all the way across. So if you've never done this, this is a helpful thing to do. In the home ribbon, in the paragraph group, we're going to take a look at borders. I'm going to drop this down and we're going to go to borders and shading. And I'm going to choose this nice dotted line here. I'm going to make it a little heavier. Maybe make it one and a half points so you can see that nice and clear. And I only want it underneath. 
so you can see what it'll look like. And then I want to make sure that it's just applied to the paragraph. You'll see there are options. You could have it just applied to the text. That would just underline where there was text typed, the paragraph, the cell in the table, or the whole table. So we just want paragraph, and I'll click OK. And now you see that nice little dotted line. And now we're ready to do our mail merge. I'm going to go ahead and save this. Alrighty. And now I go to mailings. I'm going to start a mail merge. It's a label. We're going to use our existing table for our label, so we don't want to choose anything from here. I want you to take a look in the mailings ribbon, and you can see that update labels is gray right now. Once I hit cancel, Microsoft recognizes this table as a label, and so I can update these. That's extremely important. So we're going to select our recipients. Use an existing list. Find this nice little Excel file with the ticket numbers and open. So if you're used to doing mail merge, you'll see that this is different. You usually see sheet uh, names here. Now you're seeing OLE database files. So I'm going to click Show All. And I'll scroll down to, to the bottom to select the one for this application, which is MS Excel Worksheets via DDE. So DDE is Dynamic Data Exchange. It has to do with making sure that the numbers that are formatted in Excel come into my mail merge still formatted. I click OK. And it'll just do its little thing. And I'll choose the entire spreadsheet. And now I can put in my mail merge field where I want it. So I only have one field, and it's the ticket field. And I'm going to just be using it twice. Great. So let's preview and see how this looks. And we see everything is just as we wanted. We have our little dotted line. We have our zeros. Terrific. So now I'll take off preview, and I'll update my labels. And it rolls out to every cell. We'll preview the results again just to make sure we're getting what we want. And we see there's ticket two, ticket three, four. Everything looks great. This is exactly what we want. So now we'll just finish the merge. So we go to finish and edit individual documents. All OK. And we get a brand new file called label one with all of our merges in here. Everything looks great. 944. Just make sure we got them. We have them all. And all the way to 1000. So that's it. So um, I do like to give myself a little bit of room for error for cutting. So I'm going to select the entire table and go to Table T Tools and Layout and Cell Margins. And I will allow some spacing between the cells. And I'm going to say 0.05 and click OK. And now you can see that we've had a little problem here where my ticket number on this side is being cut high, off. So you can see it, but that's not a problem. It. And then that gives us a little bit of gutter room. I can simply to cut, jiggle around so with this. I'll go to my mail. So I'll go to home. Time, finish and merge. Edit individual do documents. Show hide. And there you go. And I can change my line spacing options. So I hope you found this exactly extra tip helpful. Um, remember nine. not to use a text box. And to and turn on that the file format at conversion it on the ticket. to make sure that your so numbers how do I roll this out like. to so all I'm of Cindy the other McCall, cells. And thanks a lot for joining me. A matter of going Have to a mailings great day. And updating the labels. And now it's all rolled out. Okay, so after we have now adjusted this so that we can see the ticket number section here um, in both locations, you could highlight it and 
change the font or make it bold or whatever you wanted to do. If you were going to print this out in red uh, or use full color, you could certainly do that. Um, what I'd like to show you or to point out is that this next record field to pull the data from the next row. So don't worry that on your subsequent labels, um, it doesn't look like everything's going to fit. Once you um, hook everything together and you update your labels and you hit your preview, preview is really going to show you what it's going to look like when it prints. If when you turn on the preview, you see that this ticket number is um, getting pushed out into the margin of the table, then you need to make an adjustment. But the reason that that shifts down is the next record um, merge field. So don't worry about that at all. One other thing I'd like to suggest, uh, this particular sheet is sort of set up like those business cards, those Avery business card sheets of labels. Um, and people will often have this issue at the bottom where they'll have a blank page following. So I'm going to go to the home ribbon and turn on that show hide again and see what happens. There's a paragraph return. And try as we might, I mean, we can come up here on that first page and hit delete as many times as we want. And we can't get that paragraph return to come up. And when we run the merge, we may have blank pages in between. So how do we get rid of that? By turning on show hide, we can uh, now see that paragraph return and just come up into the font size box um, on the home ribbon, type a one and hit enter. And you'll see that it's the fact that it was waiting for text that was at point 11 that would push it down to the next page. But just making that a point size of one uh, makes it scooch up and fit. So I've never known that little trick to fail. And one more thing. Uh, so you have lines. Well, we have lines around all of these cells. And it looks nice, um, you know, on paper and it gives us a guideline. But sometimes you're just going to use a paper cutter or you're going to print this on that business card stock and the lines may not fall precisely where you want. So let's get rid of those lines. I'm going to click to select the entire table. And that was this little icon up here in the corner. And then on table tools design, I am going to go to the borders group and drop it down and just say no borders. All right. So uh, if your page now looks like this, it can be very hard to see, you know, where um, your tickets are ending and things like that. I'm also going to go to the home ribbon and turn off the show hide again to get rid of that markup that you don't really want to see. So how can we sort of get the idea of the spacing without the printed lines? Yeah, it's simply under table tools and layout. And in the table group, click view grid lines. And you'll see these little dotted lines. They are not going to print. They really are guides. And they're here uh, illustrating where the gutter is that we put in and uh, where the edges are around your ticket. So I think we're all ready to go now. Uh, all those little touches are done. We'll have 100 pages with 10 tickets on each page. So that's it. I hope that those little tips and additions that I gave you um, beyond the basics for raffle tickets helps you get to your goal. If you have any questions, you can contact me through uh, by leaving a comment on this YouTube video. Thanks. Have a great day.